This is my 100th YouTube video. Yay, woohoo, celebrate. Go me. Mr. Beast says talk to him after you've made 100 videos. So according to him, it takes at least 100 to even get a feel for what you're doing and to learn really real applicable things, to consider yourself experienced, to have learned a little bit about what it takes to make a good YouTube video. I don't know, I'm not Mr. Beast, but he is doing very well for himself. Specifically, I make videos in the booktube niche and even more specifically in the fantasy booktube niche. I would say it's kind of a small, slow growing niche. It's kind of hard to just explode with popularity when you're talking about books. But over these 100 videos, there is plenty of stuff that I have learned and I would love to share that with you. Some of the biggest like accomplishment style stuff that I've learned is real skills like video editing, photo editing, because you have to make a thumbnail for your video. I started on Adobe Premiere Pro. It took me so many hours to edit my first video. I had never done anything like that ever. I'm not a techie person. Anything technical or computery is so out of my wheelhouse. I'm a book nerd. I like to read. I wanted to make videos about the books I read, but I had to get way out of my comfort zone and learn new skills. That was really frustrating at some points because it was stuff that I wasn't good at. I was bad at it. I'm not saying I'm a super good video or photo editor now, but I am better than when I started. And I'd like to think that now that I have those first 100 videos behind me, I'll just continue to get even better as I go. And one of the most encouraging things that I heard on a different YouTube channel interviewing a farm lifestyle vlogger. <laughs> she was like me. She was not computery or techie, but she said she would learn one new thing at a time. So when you're editing a video, learn how to do one extra thing, get comfortable with that, then add another extra thing like punching in <laughs> or text or transitions between clips. I started learning on Adobe Premiere Pro, but you have to pay for that one. So now both my husband and I are using DaVinci Resolve. For me, it's just as easy to use. I don't do anything super fancy with my videos. I am a talking head, <laughs> talking torso, I guess. But I'm not a vlogger, so I'm not like walking around adding a whole bunch of B-roll and stuff. So it's pretty easy. And I kind of use a mix of Canva and Photoshop for my thumbnails. For me, Canva is way easier. Um, Photoshop is better, so I'm trying to learn more on Photoshop and I'm hoping that my thumbnails continue to improve. I feel like that's kind of weak for me right now and I'd really love to improve on that. So one of the things I learned was I can learn new skills. <laughs> I can learn to get better at things that I'm bad at. And if there's something I really want to do in life, like a YouTube channel, I can learn what I need to and so can you. You can. Yes, you can. Other things I had to learn how to do were coming up with ideas, how to hop on a trend, how to write a script. And sometimes you want to write a full on script and sometimes you just want bullet points and you have to know which one is more applicable when. I do in-depth character studies from the books that I read. For those, I am more likely to script it out. For a video like this, bullet points. <laughs> The benefit of a script is that you're less likely to forget what you really wanted to say. Or if you wanted to word something very specifically, you have it written down right in front of you. The benefit of bullet points is that it's easier to talk more conversationally and more naturally. I've learned how to do both and I'm probably still learning when each one is better. Right now I'm using bullet points. <laughs> Other things I learned, maybe a little less of a concrete I can now use this computer program, but still skills are talking to the camera. Sometimes it feels really weird to be talking to a lens instead of a person. It can feel like you're just talking to yourself, especially if you have a monitor or a viewfinder on your camera and you're looking at yourself instead of the camera. <laughs> At this point, after editing so many of my own videos, I'm so familiar with what I sound like and what I look like. I feel less self-conscious and I feel like I'm able to just speak 
more naturally. And because I know that I have at least a few people watching each video, I can more easily imagine that I am talking to a person instead of to an inanimate object. I also think to a certain extent, I've learned how to just get over myself, getting over the fear of being on camera and having people see me online whether it's strangers or people who know me in real life, kind of getting over some of that self-consciousness, consciously deciding that I'm not going to care too much about how I look. I am not as young as some of the more popular booktubers right now. I'm closer to 40 than 30. And I know that's fine, but it's something to get used to. <laughs> also, if you're doing your channel right, and I'm really trying, it doesn't matter what your voice sounds like, it doesn't matter how you look, what matters is what you have to say. And can the people watching you tell that you care about what you have to say? I talk about fictional characters, people in books who aren't even real, but I care about them and I really hope that my care for those characters comes across to the people who watch my videos. Because I know that there's major book nerds out there who care way too much about the characters and the books they read, and I want them to know that they're not alone. I think I've also learned to embrace my niche. This is my hundredth video. I have just over 500 subscribers. It has been very slow growing. The booktubers that are very big and well respected took years to get there. I know that it's a slow growing niche. And I have been very tempted to switch my channel to something more lucrative. I have other skills, I know other stuff, but books are what I want to talk about. And so knowing that it's going to be slow growing, I'm not gonna go viral. So just embrace the thing that I care about because there are other people who care about the same thing. There is an audience for everything. Some audiences are bigger than others and that bigger audience can be really tempting. But that little audience of people who really love books just as much or even more than me, that's what I'm gonna keep doing. Okay, and then things I've learned specifically to my niche are to not be afraid to read what I want to read. Also, to not be afraid to read what's popular just because it's popular. <laughs> I tend to be a rebellious reader. If something is wildly popular, I don't want to just read what everyone else is reading. <laughs> but sometimes the reason everyone is reading it is because it's actually good and I do like a good book. But there is a lot of pressure in the book world to constantly be reading all the new releases that are coming out. There are more books that come out every year then there is time for a person to read them all. There is a lot of pressure to read whatever is the most popular on TikTok or Instagram. FOMO, fear of missing out. I can't miss out. Everyone's into this book right now and I'm not. I'm still reading these books from 20 years ago, which I actually am. I'm still catching up on The Wheel of Time, which came out in the 90s. Which brings me to my last point, which for me is booktube specific, but it could be applicable to any niche, which is reading has to first and foremost be for myself. If you are watching this because you are a YouTuber doing some other subject, whatever you're making a video about, I'm assuming is something that you care about, which means that that thing that you are doing that you're going to make videos about has to be for you. I read because I enjoy reading and I'm going to pick the books that I want to read. If you like to cook, cook the food that you're passionate about you don't have to switch to the food that gets more views. Here's the separation I make for myself. The reading is for me. The videos are for my audience. So if you are a YouTuber or aspiring YouTuber, follow Think Media, Nick Nimmin, Roberto Blake, they're great. If you're watching this channel because you like books, please subscribe. I make what I think is some pretty good book content. And I would love if you would comment whether you are a YouTuber or a reader or why you're here watching this video in the first place. And I will see you back here for more videos, hopefully. <laughs> Bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Smash that like button. Hit the bell to get notifications. Share this video with friends and family. Hashtag YouTuber stuff that they say.